to the computer. And then we're going to... Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We lost somebody. I hope more people show up. Where is everybody? We have <laughs> 50 people, 57, 58 people on the list. Wow. There's Claudia. There's Kathy Hayes. And I'll be <laughs> dead. Kathy Hayes. Hi, Claudia. In the car. We have two in the yes. car. <laughs> I want to do something. Oh, that's what I want to do. Oh, her name, iPhone. I can't think of her name. Who? Oh, she has an iPhone. She's in a car. Uh, Evelyn? No. <clears throat> Claudia? Yeah. No. We, we see her name. Okay. Can you see my screen? Ezekiel part two? Yes. 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 Okay. Well, while everybody's trying to work out their little kinks and stuff, we're going to go ahead and start. This was on chapters 35 and 36. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So if we go through, oh, first I want to start with this for a prayer to start. The Lord shepherd. And if you want, you can join in on me, okay? With me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I love that. I love that one, don't you? Yes. Amen. Yes. Um, hide that for a minute. I'm just going to quickly go over here for a review. If you look at the timeline, in 597, Ezekiel went into exile. Mm -hmm. In um, 586 BC, Jerusalem fell and heard in Babylon. And that's where we're at in Ezekiel. Then Jesus was born, and he is the good shepherd that Ezekiel and Jeremiah and all these prophets were talking about. And then one day, David will be prince, the covenant of prince to live and dwell securely. We will be delivered and rescued, no longer pray, and we will be God's people, and, well, he will mm -hmm. be our God, right? Is that how it goes? Mm -hmm. I love that saying, too, don't you? Mm -hmm. So Ezekiel begins in the fifth year of King Joachim Chin's exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. I feel a dog. Ezekiel 1 through 23, there's visions, signs, and prophecies about the coming siege and destruction of Jerusalem and about God's glory leaving his temple and the city because of Jesus, Jerusalem's abominations. And we will get in detail in that. And it, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be kind of spooky, you guys. The leaders and the people's sins, another exile was coming. Then in Ezekiel 24, we read about the siege on Jerusalem began, the parable of the pot. And then Ezekiel 25 through 32, there's prophecies against other nations. Babylon will, be, will take them. These prophecies in chapters 1 through 32, which was part one of our study, came from the Lord to Ezekiel from the 5th through the 12th years of his exile. Jerusalem fell in the 11th year. <clears throat> Then in Ezekiel 33 and 34, God said again that Ezekiel had, had been appointed by him as Israel's watchman to warn. Again, God said his judgment was according to what each individual had done. So remember that when you're sinning, he's going to judge you individually. Then word reached Ezekiel and Babylon <laughs> that Jerusalem had been taken. A prophecy against the shepherds, probably kings and princes of Israel. Then a message of hope and restoration. God will deal with his people securely on their land. These promises are in the future. 
So you got a bunch of promises, but most of them are in the future. Okay, you got to watch this because I worked hard on this. It's supposed to be a big splash sound. Oh, that's cute. Isn't that cute? (laughs) (laughs) But the sound didn't come through. So on chapter 35, what do you have as a chapter theme on, on 35? That is a question to you. I uh, have judges eat them. Yeah. Eat them. Okay. I have Here's punishment this. for eat them. Maybe I can get this. Okay. All right. Anything oh, else? Knives. <laughs> <laughs> I have God will cut off eat them because they hate Israel. Very good. Yeah. And the prophecy is against Mount Seir, which is Edom. God will judge Mount Seir because of everlasting enemy against Israel. There was a handout I sent you. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? I read them all. You read them all. Yeah. Oh, I had more. Um, yeah, all the all the countries that hated Israel, and are yeah, they around okay. anymore? Nope, nope, they're not, are they? It's a long list. It is, isn't it? So mm-hmm. Mount Seir is in where in the Bible time? You just answered this. It looks like Edom. it's down by Jordan. Yeah. It's- this is then, this one, see then and then now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, then, it, yeah. See that? It looks like so it's you, in Jordan. Yeah, it's in Jordan. Yeah. I think I even went on that mountain. Mm. Is that the mountain where um, Moses looked at the lamb, but he couldn't go in it? I don't remember that. Is that the one he, where they said the blessings and the curses? Did they say the curses to Mount Seir? Maybe I got. No, maybe that's. Uh, I don't know. That, that is, that's elsewhere. That's more Noah. I just can't remember what mountain. That's but in this place, interesting to see. Ramallah, in fact. What's... Pardon me. But isn't it interesting to see where Egypt? Look how much land Egypt has compared to what it used to. And mm-hmm. then Midian is now Saudi Arabia. And up here, mm-hmm. um, Aram is Syria. Syria. Now, if you listen to the news right at this border right here, there's a lot of action going up on mm-hmm. Hezbollah. Yeah. So what happens in chapter 35 to Mount Seir? In, in verses one through nine, God said he will do some things. What did he say he will do? Well, in verse make, three, he's going to make it a desolation and a waste. A desolation and a waste. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What else? He will give There's it over. To left. <laughs> he wipes them out and makes everything a wasteland and kills them all off. There's a certain word that he used. Verse 6, he gives them over to bloodshed. Bloodshed, yeah. Bloodshed is the blank there. Fill it, it with people slain by the sword. He also says the battle is... Punishment. It's coming, right? It's punishment. And it'll be an everlasting... Desolation. 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 Without without inhabitants. inhabitants. Oh, you guys are good. I went through and filled it all out. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. It was a lot of work. Extra work. Yeah, but it made you think, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Where'd you get this? I've just made it up. Oh, pretty good. (laughs) I thought I'd do fill in the blank. I know I don't like those, so I thought I'd see how you liked them. We don't. It does make you think. 
So why will this happen? It'll happen because what did Edom do? Refused to help Israel. Yeah. Yeah. What did they, they say? That Israel was theirs, the possession of the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you know they still say that? When we yes. were in, yeah, when we were in Jordan, mm -hmm. um, and um Yael was our our and he was Muslim. And uh, my husband heard him talking to a friend and he goes, when we take the land back, mm -hmm. what do you think he was talking about? Israel. Israel. To oh, this day. Yeah, and this is just a regular dude in Jordan. Okay. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. yeah. They still say it today. They hated. Who did they hate? Israel. 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 Yeah, and they envied them. They reviled the mountains of Israel. Mm -hmm. Oops, I fell in the bank. Said they were given to Edom. How did they speak against God? Arrogantly. Yeah. Arrogantly. Do you know anybody who's arrogant? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of people. Yeah. Yeah. God himself, is, I can't imagine speaking arrogantly to God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God himself is the one who gave Israel its land. Always remember that. Edom arrogantly spoke against him when they said they would possess it. Mm -hmm. And they're still doing it today. So how does Ezekiel 35 end? Remember, it's only 15 verses so it's pretty short right when god makes edom a waste. desolation a waste the rest of, yeah a desolation a waste the waste. rest of the earth will be rejoicing rejoicing <laughs> god will do to edom as they did to israel they did edom did to israel Mm -hmm. And one is the judgment. I wrote final. Final? It's everlasting? Yeah, it's everlasting. It's an everlasting judgment. Mm -hmm. Then they will know that, I, know that I am the Lord. That he is the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's supposed to go in that list that you're supposed to be keeping. Remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been keeping it. Yeah, do keep that because when you go back to it, like I went back to it, I was like, oh, wow. So what did you learn about Edom from the cross-references of the lesson? You looked at Ezekiel 24, 12 through 14. Mm -hmm. Let's see. that what does edom do they try to take on land yeah israel will bring god's wrath yeah oh god will send israel against edom mm -hmm. In this, okay, and then in the Obaida, which is a one chapter book, don't you wish we were studying that? Huh? How would you pronounce that? Obadiah. Obadiah. Oh. Okay. I probably said it wrong. This is pretty much the same that um, Obadiah said. Okay. Then, then it's the time of the end. So in Obadiah, the prophecy against. What, what is that? As Edom has done to Israel, so it will be done to them. Verse 15. Uh, what? I'm not sure where you're at. Prophecy against. Well, those two words. I didn't get... This is a prophecy against who in Obadiah? Against Edom. 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 Mm -hmm. And it will happen in the, when will it happen? Latter days in future. the future. In the future. Okay. 
And the nations will go against Edom. Edom in a battle. Battle. Battle's one of those key words. Yeah. Edom's what kind of attitude is mentioned here also? Proud. Proud and they think they are untouchable. And they're gloating over Jacob and they're persecuting the survivors of Israel, basically. Their arrogance is mentioned here also. Arrogance. Yes. Okay. So For verse head of heart, thinking they're untouchable, gloating. <clears throat> yeah, that's being arrogant, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So in verse 10 says Edom is Cut off. Brown. Eliminated forever. Edom is because of. Is that ransacked? How about judged? Oh, oh okay. They're judged okay. because of the violence to their brother Jacob. There you go. Mm -hmm. Somebody ten. found it, didn't they? <laughs> oh, is so that what verse 10 off. says? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Jacob and Esau were twins. Twins. brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Who were who were they kids of? Isaac. 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 Isaac right. And Rebecca. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Esau was also called Edom. Edom. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. where that's, that's where where the name Edom came from, okay? Mm -hmm. And God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Okay, we got one right. We all right. There will be no Yeah, I didn't get this one. Hmm. Descendants? Yeah. Let me see here. Wait. There will be I... no survivor Survive. of Esau's family line. And Israel will be the the head, not the tail. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Israel will be the possessors and not Edom. Mm. So <laughs> this this argument started way back with Jacob and Esau. And those who studied um, Genesis with us would remember this. Remember. That's not, not yeah, it. Yeah, it was it was yeah. And and who started the problem? Rebecca. Well, yeah, Rebecca. Yeah. Actually Rebecca did. She yeah. she prodded um Jake. Jacob yeah. to take away Esau's or to steal Esau's birthright. um birthright. Um, birthright, thank you. And then, then later on, he he, you know, he um, connived him on his own. These problems about Edom are unfulfilled now. They're for the future. Hmm. So if we look in chapter 36, how does this chapter begin? To the mountains of Israel. Yeah. And if you compare 35... One and two to thirty six one. Let's just look at those. Yeah. Um. Oh. Ouch. Thirty five one and two. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, "Son of man, set your fen fen fa fence yes. face against Mount Seir and prophecy prophesy pro pro against it." Yeah. And then thirty six one. And you, son of man, prophesy to the mountains of Israel and say, "O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord." So, 35 is about Edom, and 36 is about Israel. Israel. I just read it too. Yeah. Okay. One through fives are prophecies to the mountains of Israel. Mountains of Israel. God speaks about the house of Israel in 16 through 18. 
and this is another word from the Lord. At a glance chart, what do you have for um, a theme for this chapter? I have Israel's restoration plan. Oh, that's that's nice. Anybody else? I am for you for my name's sake. Ah, I like that one. What was that? will restore Israel for the sake of his name and cause reproach for the nations that reproach Israel. And he says this all bit so that you will know that I am the Lord. That always seems to be a problem for people, doesn't it? Yep. All right. This is a picture of the treasury at Petra. That's the treasury. We weren't allowed to go in. I wanted to go in. Mm -hmm. Petra is about, I, I can't remember how many miles it is. We only mm -hmm. did a couple of miles. On a, on a donkey they had to pry Ben off of the donkey <laughs> so how does verses 1 through 3 relate to Israel 35 Edom said that they were going to be his possession his possession Israel had other enemies, but Edom is named in these two chapters. Don't forget that there's other enemies, too. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so what did God say through Ezekiel about the mountains of Israel in verses 4 through 15? But they had be become a prey and diversion to the nations. Yeah, they did. Yeah. I had to look up that word derision. Oh, what did you find out? It's scorn. Scorn. They, yeah, scorn. Yeah. I didn't hear. Pray, P R E Y. Derision. Derision. When this was told, when was this told? This was told after Ezekiel heard about what? Whose fall? Jerusalem's fall. Jerusalem's fall, yeah. And what did mm -hmm. God say about the insults against Israel? That they'd been enduring, enduring the insults of the other nations, but he was going to do something about that. Yep. That the nations would endure their own insults. Yeah. Verse 9 says that God is with the nation. Yeah, nation or people of Israel. What does 9 through 15 tell us that God will do regarding the mountains? Heal. What sort of things does he say? Multiply them. Okay. Increase, make them fruitful. They'll be better mm -hmm. than they were at first. Mm -hmm. Their fruit. Yeah. They'll cause people to uh, of Israel to possess the nations. Yeah, which is their... Inheritance. inheritance inheritance right yeah remember that word yeah inheritance oh and, and they they're won't... not going to endure insults anymore yeah they aren't going to have to listen to this stuff anymore can you imagine what they're thinking now wow. where are you yeah. yeah i'm verses 9 through 15 in chapter 36 yeah i know we're on this page right, right here where i have got it we just went over this, what God will do. A tiny print down there. <laughs> He'll turn to them. Yeah. They'll He'll be killed, to cultivated. Them. They'll m multiply them. We we did just say this all, you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. treat, the first. yeah, treat them as formerly better, better than, than the first. Place. Cause people, people of Israel to possess, to possess the, the inheritance, inheritance yeah. and not let them hear other nations', nations. insults anymore. Yeah. 
What will be the result of the people of Israel who return to the land? Mm -hmm. They won't be bereaved of their children. Yeah. That means grieving or orphan of their children. Isn't that something? I had to look. I looked that one up, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, okay, what does he mean by that? And why does God do this? Does anybody remember why God? I mean, here's Israel. They aren't so whoopy the mo their own selves, right? Mm -hmm. But why does he say he's going to still do this for Israel? Is it for the sake of his name? For the yeah. sake of his name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember this. I mean, because people say, you know, I mean, Israel is still fighting over the same, and all the nations around are still fighting over the same things. Mm -hmm. The land, the inheritance, mm -hmm. what God says, who was the um, promised person, Esau or Jacob. They still argue about that. Uh huh. Well, yeah, but they think it's Edom or Esau. Uh, wow. He had. They go way back to Ishmael, don't they? they yeah, yeah, they, they go back to, yeah, to Ishmael too. Mm -hmm. Boy, they just can't let it go. <laughs> no, they can't, and it's such a tiny piece of land. But like I said last week, it is wow, the ready. most fought over <laughs> land <laughs> in the world. Mm -hmm. and so like you it, pointed out it wasn't it's not like it's that desirable there's a lot of area that it's not even desirable i don't know if evelyn's still with us but how many i don't have the video up here how many people um no that's not going to show me i don't know how to get the thingy back up um have been to um israel you have me because yeah. yeah what is what does most of israel look like desert you really and rocky it's rock. yeah, very <laughs> rocky very desert not but underneath the rocks are a lot of oil yep underneath them you can get to them oil oil in israel oh yeah yeah oh yeah well that's yeah. interesting it's, because gold um, Mayor said all the oil unfortunately God gave us this land without uh, without any oil underneath and the Arabs have all the oil what they do have is gas offshore which they try to tap into I have never heard that Israel's got oil reserves where, where can I find this information um, on the internet <laughs> oh what? it's it's yeah. Well, the they just re they, they, recent, oil, they so. really just recently <laughs> found the oil. It's it's hard to get to, okay? But they I do see. have oil. But oh, most of those is. countries do have oil. <laughs> okay. So Israel defiled their own land with what? Their ways and their deeds. Idolatry. Idols and sins. <clears throat> Is that idolatry and what? <laughs> Idols and sins? Yeah. I'm on the no. wrong page. With idols and sins. Yeah. Idols and sins. Idols and sins. So God poured out his wrath, wrath on them. Scattered them. And scattered them among the nations. 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 Mm -hmm. and he did what judge them judge them that's that's this picture here mm -hmm. according to their ways a repeated statement in ezekiel so judge must be a one keyword key yeah, yeah. <laughs> when israel god's people is in the other land his holy name yes his holy name is profane <laughs> Profane. Very good. Why are the people of God not living in the land he gave them? They were mm -hmm. exiled. Yeah, they were exiled. Oh. Might it be seen by same as failing of his as a failing of his? Yeah. Because yeah. what were the people doing? 
worshiping yeah. idols and sinning. Yeah, and they were saying this God's not around, right? Because yeah. yeah. God is concerned about his holy name. That's yeah. where that came from. So in verses 22 through 32, what is God going to do and why? He's going to vindicate his holiness. There you go. He will vindicate the holiness of his great name. He'll prove himself holy. That's what I wrote. Prove himself holy. And the nations are going He'll to prove see himself it. holy among the nations, and all will see it. And what will he do? And what? He will do what? He will cleanse okay, I... Israel and give them a new heart? Yes. A heart of flesh instead of stone. Yeah. Yeah. New heart and spirit. He'll put his spirit within him and cause him to obey him. They they will be he will be their God. And they will be his people. Mm -hmm. Anything else? He's going to multiply them. Yeah, multiply them. Fruitful, abundant. That land of Israel, do you know that they provide one a third of the fruit in the northern his hemisphere and half of the flowers? Wow. I'd heard that. Hmm. It, it, it's really interesting to see their different um, planting ideas because there's there's only two to four inches of rain a year. It's yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. I know. So how do these promises in Ezekiel um compare to the promises in Ezekiel eleven and Jeremiah? They're the same, aren't they? Yeah, they're the same promises, aren't they? Because Jeremiah says he'll make a new covenant God will make with Israel and Judah. Mm-hmm. What does Romans, uh, there's also a no, no, um, no, sorry. The Jeremiah says there is a new part of the covenant they'll make. Oh, that, that's there. Forget it. What does Romans 11 say about the time and the present? That they're hardened at the moment. Pardon hardened me? Until the full number, they're mm -hmm. hardened until the full number of Gentiles has come in. Yeah. Well, the covenant when God takes away Israel's sins is when they are all saved. And it's done when the deliverer comes and removes their ungodliness. Has this happened yet yet? No. 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 Because mm -hmm. it's the second coming of Christ. Now there is a partial hardening of Israel. Do you understand that? Yep. Until the fullness of the Until the comes. Yeah, what does that mean? I I think it isn't it that the gospel has to be preached everywhere. That's one thing. Yeah. Uh huh. So everybody has that but, opportunity. Yeah. So that it, yeah, but even even Paul says everybody sees God by the creation itself. Yes. But that's only when the fullness of the Gentiles has come into salvation. What does that mean? Does anybody know? Has anybody studied that? Huh. It means when all the Gentiles that are going to come in have come in. Huh. Does God who know who that last person is? Yes. I'm sure God knows. Is Isn't that interesting? He knows when that last, when the cup is full. That's a revelation. When you study Revelation, you you find this out that that's when the when the fullness, when the when that cup is full. Just imagine a cup. Mm. All right, and when it's full, God will close the doors of heaven for half an hour. Okay. Some people think that He is weeping because He the bowls are going to start, you know. The the what do you call it? It's bowls are second, once first. Seals. Seals. 
the seals will start being open. So oh. the revel um, revelation will begin. But that's another story, okay? When that happens, what will the people of Israel do according to Ezekiel 31 and 32? Go to Petra. No, no. They're going to repent, be ashamed for their ways. Yeah, they're, they're going to remember ways. their evil ways. Then they're going to mourn. What? Then they're going to mourn. Then they're, they're going to move, yeah. And they will be loathed. They will loathe themselves for their abominations. They'll be saved. They'll be saved. Yeah, but you don't forget how you got saved, do you? Oh, no. Mm -mm. God will call them, cause them to be ashamed and confounded in for their ways. In verses 33 through 38... What else will God cause to happen? He will cause the cities to be inhabited and mm -hmm. the waste places to be rebuilt. Yeah. The land's going to be like the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about the population? Increase like a flock. Yeah, and I, I just, you know, they'll just be having babies all over the place. Verse 36 says what? That the nations left round about will know that the Lord has done this. Yes. And that he is the Lord. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting that emphasis on I have rebuilt, I have spoken, I will do it. I am the Lord. I found that interesting. It's all God's work, really. It is, it's isn't not, it? It's yeah. not Israel's work. It's not any human achievement. It is all God's work. Exactly. And that's why you can count on it. I don't know about you, but there's not much in this world I can count on. No, that's true. <laughs> you know. It's so what do you think about these promises in Israel's future? Is God finished with Israel? No. It's they been interesting not... to watch him in the news, though, lately. You know, hearing about what's going on over there. Yeah, and isn't it an interesting thing that we're studying this while that's going on? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it gets to the point yet that y'all just covered. God's promises are sure, and all of his promises are sure. Amen. This picture here, and we'll, I'll show you more pictures as we go along, is a model in Jerusalem of the mm -hmm. third temple. Oh. Mm hmm. Yeah, the, there's um, there is a whole area where they have the old. Hi, Laura. I just saw Laura Webb there. <laughs> so I was getting ready to ask, but Laura. Okay. Yeah, that's Laura. Did Debbie make it? That, that's what I was wondering, Debbie. Okay. There's okay. Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Hi. Um, but there's um of the old temple and then what the new area will look like. Hmm. So talking about what we've studied this week, how does that compare? What do you think what's going on now? Yeah. What do you think? I think we're, we're waiting. For... Again. What? Uh, we're waiting for them to have a new heart <laughs> to be uh, awakened oh. to their Messiah, really. Well, that won't that happen until he shows and... up. <laughs> well, uh, new heart, new fle uh, made of flesh, new mind, change of mind, recognizing the Messiah. We're waiting for that. Yep. Because mm -hmm. they sure don't believe in him now, do they? Oh, no. more, more Let me tell you, they do not believe in him. No. The majority, but there seems like there are more and more that do understand Jesus is the Messiah. Yes, they're coming. Yeah, you know, a lot of people are having dreams and stuff. I met many Jews that have been turned to the Lord. There's a whole group of them in Memphis. Mm. Yay. 
I've been to their Seder. Oh, it's wonderful. I mean, they explain how the Seder points to Jesus. Oh, that'd be awesome. Oh, it is. It's really awesome. If you ever get a chance to go to um, a Messianic. Messianic, yeah. Barbara's laughing at me. (laughs) I did read that article that you sent us on the Messianic, the differences. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, it was uh, very helpful. Yes. It, it it's really interesting to see the differences, you know. I love it, you know. And they have such kind hearts. You know, I think there's they make... a lot Go I think ahead, there's a lot going on over in Israel too. The woman in my Bible study that's a retired missionary mm-hmm. from uh they live near Nazareth and work there. And they said it's not just Jews coming to the Lord, it's Muslims too now. Yeah, um, in the midst of all this mess over there. Mm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Well, he's working, and a lot of them, most I of them seem, you. most of them see him in dreams. Oh, uh, yeah. And, you know, and I've said this before because Jesus said it to me, you know, you belong to me. He says that, he said that to me. He says that a lot to the Muslims. He goes, you belong to me. Isn't that interesting? When you freak out if you had a dream of Jesus and he and you knew it was him. <laughs> yeah. And he says, You belong to me. I mean, and it's earth shattering. You mm-hmm. know it's him saying it. And it's just I wish everybody could hear those words. Yeah. You know, I said that in church one a uh, couple weeks ago, and everybody looked at me like I was a nutcase. Because they've just always loved Jesus. That's what they were all talking about. I go, well, I didn't. <laughs> I remember shaking yeah. my fist at God, you know. So, when you've had a, a face-to-face with Jesus, it's um, unforgiv- unforgettable. Gosh, I hope Tracy can at least hear us. I feel bad for her. Any other comments? This is actually, believe it or not, a kind of a short one, wasn't it? Uh, it wasn't as hard yeah. as last week's, was it? Well, the fill in the blank was a surprise. <laughs> but it was it was a uh, good for me, you know, a good review on top of what I did. I did appreciate that. Thank you, Denise. You did? Oh, okay. Do you like the fill in the blank? Yeah, I did. Because it made me go over it again and really get, you know, all the details. Laura's looking like I didn't like it at all. (laughs) I can't hear you. You're muted. I do like it. I fill in the blank. You do or don't? I do. You do? Oh, okay. I thought it was helpful, and I kept thinking of um, where it says in Romans, Esau, have I hated, and Jacob, as I have I loved. Now, does does God really hate Esau? Have you studied? Okay, if you studied this, if you studied this, that word hatred is, I liked, basically, I liked Jacob better than I liked Esau. Yes. That's when it really means. Right, Barbara? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Because it's impossible for God to really hate. <gasps> but it's it's his terminology, you know, and that's why we especially in Genesis, we do so many uh word lookups, don't we? Yeah. Well, guys, can you think of anything else that you thought of while you were doing this lesson before I find the DVD? Hmm? Oh, ouch. Well, I, I, I was reminded of the fact that it seems to be a two-step process. First, they go back to the land, uh, which seems to be possibly now. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> cause, it's uh, a process. Ezekiel's 
because Ezekiel's time was already, you know, I would have understood if I had been Ezekiel, I would have understood it as going back after 70 years. So they've already been back because uh, while this is going on or being prophesied, this was actually before the second temple. So they've already gone back once and they were thrown out again. I find that slightly confusing. Uh, and they had their Messiah come and uh, they got thrown out again. So in fact, a third temple to me doesn't make even any sense because the once and for all sacrifice has been has taken place in, in Jesus. So this whole concept of build a third temple and start sacrificing again doesn't make well, any sense. Well, back I'm then they confused. didn't call it the third <laughs> temple. They called it Ezekiel's temple. Yeah, yeah, but uh, big, earlier you yourself spoke about the third well, temple. Well, I did that because so, now we talk about the third temple. Uh, yeah, but, but all I'm saying then, is it was yeah, Ezekiel's uh, temple. Yes, but um, I'm I'm still intrigued because the Jews nowadays do talk about the third temple, and oh, because they have it Jesus or I know, uh, and they're they're intruding into that temple area further and further, so. I'm really still confused, but yes, we can see there's a two-step process. First, they get the land, uh, and then the spiritual side is remedied. But I'm still very confused when I look at this land of Israel and their history, because like I said, you know, Ezekiel was before the second temple. So they've to say, I'm going to take you back, they've already been taken back once. So then they were thrown out again. So now we're looking at the third, uh, at the uh, second time they go back, and they're planning a third temple. I find it all very confusing. So I guess we're now just waiting for God awakening these people spiritually. Well, I think too the the last time they were dispersed throughout the world, not just yeah. taken over into Babylon and returned from Babylon. So yeah, they're and, out and in really, it everywhere. was just a peep. Yeah, they were everywhere, back. but they were just coming back from Babylon. But mo most of them stayed. Yeah. Well, they were not just coming back from Babylon because uh, they had been taken to Assyria and Babylon, and Babylon took over Assyria. So, in that sense, well, that the nation of Israel was actually reunited upon their return because they were no, split into. No, no they were No, a lot they, of they them were... stayed where they were at. They didn't I'm not all saying every. I didn't the say biggest, everybody okay. went. The biggest back. move back happened in what year? Yeah, I, I didn't say they all moved back, but the exile to Babylon basically mm -hmm. reunited the northern and the southern people. People, various people, did go back. Uh, Babylon took over Assyria, and uh, Persia. Cyrus took over. Babylon and Assyria. So he said everybody can go back. Not everybody did go back, but I'm just, all I'm saying is I'm slightly confused about the sequence because while this is being said, it's yeah, yeah. Be before, before the second temple. They were sent back. They did reclaim that land and had a second temple, yet uh, they were thrown out again. So I find it all very confusing. And people talking about a third temple makes no sense if you believe in, in the Messiah. Jesus, the once and for all sacrifice. So I'm, I'm intrigued. I'm really yeah. intrigued. I would suggest that you do more research on the Bible, you know, and read it more thoroughly. <laughs> well, seriously, oh, because it, the history is there. But in 1948, yeah. Israel was made a country again. Well, they were made a country again in the, uh, uh, for the Second Temple. Well, no, no they, the still to it. they still they still believe uh, they still Israel still belonged to Babylon. Yeah, maybe that's the one. They I'm weren't, they weren't allowed to be Israel again until 1948. Right. I'm, I'm brand new, but can I just make a really quick comment? <laughs> no, yes. Michelle, not at all. No, go ahead. Yes, Claudia, Hi, you, girl. <laughs> hello. Claudia, do you realize that for end time prophecy to be fulfilled, this lawless one that we know is coming, that has not come yet, he has to come into the temple and defile um, mm -hmm. the holy place. So there is, there has, it to, has be, to be a temple. We're mm -hmm. not saying the third temple is necessarily a good thing. We're saying that the reality of it is important. It has to come about. 
the Jews have to build that temple because there is prophecy that is yet to be fulfilled. And what we're reading in Ezekiel is after that. This is when, this is the millennial temple. So yeah, there's so much more to learn about all of these things that have yet. So you're kind of thinking that this has all been fulfilled, but it hasn't. It hasn't. There's there's more to learn and there's more to understand about prophecy. And there's a lot of people like you, Claudia, who who get confused and don't understand that and think it's been fulfilled. But in, in reality, if you look at the whole context of the Bible, that can't be true. That's just my my little um, two cents there. Well, yeah, we know right, Jesus, Jesus spoke about the abomination of desolation, and that's in Daniel, too. Exactly, exactly. As, and, and it had that, already happened. It had already happened once. Yes. Right. In Jesus' right. time. But it's going to happen again. Because like Jesus the, said the it Antichrist. The Antichrist. Antichrist. Right. Yeah. Right. The, the Antichrist. Right. The Antichrist. Right. Yeah. The one that hasn't come yet. The one that the world is being primed for right now. Oh, boy. And it, can't you see it getting primed? <laughs> yeah. Well, I everything mean, goes on as sinful. Uh, everything. I'm sorry. She got stuck. Uh, <laughs> She's on a five phone. Can't see her. She hasn't moved at all. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there's a lot of things that have to happen, but it's interesting to watch things going up now on now. You know, and for America to think that they can solve the problem is one of the most arrogant things I've ever ever seen in my life absolutely agree i mean you yes. talk about arrogance I, I just you know we're gonna make the solution we're gonna have peace in israel well i hate to tell you but the bible doesn't say that does it no we're not gonna have peace we're not gonna see peace in israel unless the messiah comes and even then yes. it's gonna be rough for a while yeah. <laughs> You know, like yes, a thousand so. years, like a thousand oh. years once he takes. But I think it's interesting in Ezekiel, it says, who's going to rule Jerusalem or Israel? Jesus, uh, the son of David, the, yeah. the, David himself, actually, David himself. Yeah, mm -hmm. David himself is going to rule Jerusalem, but Jesus is going to rule the world from mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Kind of interesting. And we get to watch it. We, we'll probably be in our immortal bodies. I hope so. <laughs> this, one, this one's shot. But um, I really want to know how it all pans out in reality. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> and I bet you yeah, know, I don't know want to be with it. I bet we all have it wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, I think it's interesting what Claudia just said. She wants to see how it all pans out. Yeah. You know, there's premillennialists, there's postmillennialists, there's amillennialists. Oh, yeah. And I've always been a panmillennialist. <laughs> it's going to pan, pan out. out. What, Michelle? I, I'm a, I, I'm a, I have no clue, millennialist. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's a mess. Well, I, I don't know if you noticed, but in your handouts, there is. Um, Someone and I don't know where I got them from, but they're really good. They have fill in the blanks too. Um, on uh, K. Arthur's lecture. Oh, yeah, yeah, because I first read this and I got because I didn't remember. <laughs> I go, What is this? I go, Oh, this is K. Arthur's lecture. Yeah, so you got some really cool material. It's not word for word, but it 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 has the themes and stuff. So, um, I don't know how I got a hold of them. I think I got a hold of them from the site that went belly up. I think Precepts closed them down because they were putting out stuff like this. But I liked it, so I got as much as I could. Me too. Was it through the leadership guide that they give you? They print out no. No, yeah, it, it's it's in the printouts I sent you. Yeah. And it says, Ezekiel part two, an end is coming. What will it be like? Oh, Claudia, this is just for you. 
the end of Jerusalem, she goes in and she goes into the um, Daniel statue, you know. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, she she goes into that and the Great Tribulation. Oh, I've got all sorts of notes. So you have, oh yeah, she goes through the timeline and this until the salvation of Israel with the new covenant. So are you ready for that? That's going to be good. Wow. So let me put the old CD in if my arms will work. Okay. Then we have to wait a minute. Kathy, I love your fan, but it's making me dizzy. <laughs> Kathy Hayes. Yeah. <laughs> or just turn your video off if you want. At first it looked like she was just waving at you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> it was making me dizzy. Claudia, I love that flower. What kind of, is that a peony? Looks like it. It does, doesn't it? It's actually a tulip. Is it? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, I've seen a tulip like... with those colors. <laughs> yeah, they, there's loads of different types these days. 